wildfire sounds like the least sexy one, but they are the most important one in the graph. Now, this is the part where I get very upset. Now, Sweden, I can kind of, like, you guys, I like, give you, you're fine. You're kind of cool. But, because you kind of got streaming, we're still behind in most countries. But the thing that blows my mind is how attached the music industry is married to, like, iTunes links. And then we pay money, pay, pay money, to push out iTunes links to mobile phones. Now, what did I say at the beginning? How many of the population have Android phones? 80%. So 80% of the people that we're paying to reach click on the link and get an error message. That blows my mind. Why are we doing this? And you think that this is happening once in a while. This is happening all the time. So first things first. When you're giving out links, does it work on every mobile phone? Does it work on desktop? Does it work on mobile? Do I need to give one link for desktop, one link for different mobiles? If you wanted to, you could target an, iOS, uh, an iPhone 5 or an iOS 7 on Wi-Fi that's on a specific carrier, if you wanted to. Those are the possibilities that you have in targeting. Use some of them. Now, Wi-Fi. Now, I know Sweden, you guys have like internet, like it's water, like this thing is just flowing, right? In the rest of the world, this is not the case. Even in the UK, if you give me a uh, music video that I need to watch on my phone and I'm not on Wi-Fi, I probably am not going to watch it because that's going to kill my data plan, right? So if you're pushing out music videos, maybe you should only be pushing it out to people who are connected to Wi-Fi. Because if it's too big, I ain't going to watch it on my phone. So be careful with stuff like that. Now, the most important one is actually streaming. How do you get the right link to the right streaming platform? And that I'm going to talk about in a second. You can't do that in these platforms, but you can do it, do it using a new tool I found, which I'll talk to you about a bit later. So that's some of the targeting you've got. Now you've decided, you've created this beautiful ad, you targeted it correctly, and now we're going to pay for it. So how do we pay for it? Well, we have to pay cost per click, or cost per impression, so those are the big differences. So either you pay for every time someone clicks on it, or you pay every time a thousand people see it. So, by the way, for those of you who've never done advertising, you decide how much you spend. So you tell Facebook, Twitter, and Google, I want to spend 10 pounds a day, or five pounds, or 20, whatever it might be. Please start small, and there's no such thing as too small. Like five pounds, 10 pounds is fine, at times by 10 or 12, or whatever the Swedish equivalent is. And and you'll be fine with that. Just start small, learn how you do it, and then increase it. I promise you, you don't need to have a lot of money. If you've got 10,000 likes, and you're spending more than 10, 20, 30 pounds a day, you're spending too much, right? Because you're overspending. Just build it up slowly. And most of the time, you want to be doing cost per click. So you, you pay every time someone actually clicks on it. Now, some people say to me, ha ha, I'm so smart. I'm going to do cost per cost per click, but I'm not actually going to have anything to click on, so I will never pay, because no one will ever click. Guys, that's not going to work. If no one clicks on it, then Facebook's going to be like, this is a terrible ad, I'm not showing it to anybody. So don't try to outsmart the system, right? And then cost per acquisition or conversion <laughs> tracking is the one I talked about where Facebook can actually track whether people are going through to the end page and signing up or paying. You can, you can actually only pay if someone goes to the end page and says thank you for signing up. Now obviously that's more expensive than cost per click, but you might want to try it out and see which one works out. Cost per follow indications obviously on Twitter. Cost per view is very important now when it comes to the new video ads. And then don't confuse this with click-through rates. A lot of people say, where is the click-through rate? That's what, you, what the results, right? So when you've got the ad gone live, you check the click-through rate and you see which one is doing well. Now, this is so important. With digital advertising, you get feedback live. So please, can you actually read that feedback, right? So you place the ad, it tells you whether it's doing well or not. Now, here's another thing that I hate. How many of you, when you place advertising, how many ads do you place? How many, do you, how many of you just place one ad at a time? One ad at a time? Yeah. Okay, two ads at a time. People are shy, they're not putting their hands, uh, hands up because they know I'm gonna shout at somebody. <laughs> Uh, you didn't put your hands up, but I know you. There are loads of you in this room that are putting up one ad at a time. You know you are doing it. You are. You cannot do that, please. When you're placing ads, you have to place minimum two ads at the same time. You should be putting, placing like three or four or five, but let's start with two. 
because you need to A, B test everything because you don't know what works, I don't know what works, I'm making it up as I go along, right? So you have to check, did it work when I targeted people who sounded like them? Should, I, should it have been this geography? Should I have written it in a different language? Should I, like you have to try all this different targeting. I'm gonna show you some really advanced targeting in a minute, but you should be testing it all out and then you look at your click-through rate and then you see which one is doing well Hold on, that one's got a click-through rate of 20%, this one's got a click-through rate of 1%, let me kill that one, that one works better. That's the only way you learn. You, you don't know what's good or bad results, you only know when you test it against yourself. So always have at least two ads, maybe one looks different, one has a different call to action, or one has a different targeting group, or one has a different geography, or one has a different time, or whatever it might be, but always place more than one ad, that is the only way you're gonna learn. Next thing, how many of you place ads on Facebook or on Twitter? Then I'll let you do Twitter advertising. Let's do Facebook. When you place an ad, how many of you place an ad that lasts one day? Two days? Be honest, people. Three days? Four days? A week? More than a week? I'm going to kill all of you. Okay, so you cannot... Facebook changes every day. If your ad is sitting in my newsfeed the whole week, I am gonna hate you by the end of the week. <laughs> I will not go to your show just to spite you, right? You cannot, you have to act like the environment you're in, right? If you're on Facebook, you gotta change the picture. You gotta change the call to action. You gotta change the ad. Minimum, I, I mean, maximum I want two days, maybe three if you're really lazy, right? If it stays more than three days, you're dead to me, right? You're gone. Please, guys, it's the same thing on Twitter. You can see how many minutes it was tweeted on. It's like one minute, three minutes, four minutes, two days. I'm like, what, 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 what's going on here, right? You have to adapt to the thing. So change your ad. You can have one that just changes so that every day you have a different picture or whatever it might be. Now, if you don't believe me with all of this, I'm so happy that uh, Facebook's actually done this, but they've made your score public. They can tell you how bad you are at advertising. Oh. Because people didn't believe me before and now I have proof. So the point here is that it's a new thing called a relevant score. Next to your click-through rate, after a while, you'll get a relevant score that tells you how well your ad is doing. 10 out of 10 is the best one. So obviously, you can figure out the rest. The point here is that this is a great way of figuring out, because click-through rate's quite good, but it's not perfect. This is much better than click-through rate. It gives you a like, minute-by-minute updated <coughs> score. The minute the score goes below eight or seven, Kill the ad, you're annoying people, right? And place a new one. So please watch those things, and that's how you learn which one's doing better than, than the other, right? It's a really great thing. Now, another thing to note is that although Facebook is the only one that's made it public, every single advertising platform has a relevant score internally for you. And the more you suck, the more expensive it gets to advertise. They keep a quality score. They say, oh, you're always bugging people with toilet paper. You're going to pay a lot of money for that, right? They give you a quality score, and you, the more your ad looks bad, the more they charge you for it. So you really need to think about how good your ad is. If you wouldn't click on it, don't place it. It's not worth spending the money. Now let's talk about advanced advertising. So first of all, we're going to talk about retargeting. How many of you know what retargeting is or have heard of retargeting? Okay, for those of you who haven't got your hands up, I'm sure you've all experienced it. This is what it looks like. You have a weak moment, you go to a shoe <laughs> store, you're thinking, should I buy the shoes, shouldn't I buy the shoes? You decide not, I spend my shoe allowance for the week. So you go onto Facebook and the shoes follow you around, right? Yeah. You've all done that, right? Yeah. That's retargeting, that's kind of how it works from a user perspective. How does it work from a advertising perspective? So, retargeting is amazing. Now, it works really well for music because although sometimes it can get quite annoying when the shoes follow you around for a month and you're like, either I bought the shoes or I really didn't want the shoes. But with music, it kind of works very well because if my own artist that I like is reminding me that they've got a new album out, I'm actually quite happy. And they're reminding me that they're going on tour. And I mean, I kind of think that's cool because I really wanted to know. And some people forgot to tell me, right? So retargeting in music, most of the time, is not so annoying if you don't abuse it. So retargeting is a very, very positive thing, specifically for music. So how does it work? So we can target people. We can tag them. We can 
followed him around the internet. And the way it works is we place a cookie in their browser. Now, not their selves, not their computer, the browser, the internet browser, which of course you can candidly. And if you are logged in to Gmail, you can do it across um, desktop and mobile. Now, very important to note, something that I didn't actually know for a long time, is that iOS does not allow cookies. So it doesn't work on iOS. It only works on desktops and Android phones. So that's a big watch out. Don't try to retargeting things, targeting iOS, because it's not going to work. Now, those cookies that are placed by Pixel, so the Pixel is the code, the cookie is what's placed on your browser, gets... <laughs> It's placed there by a marketing, uh, by an advertising platform. They're the ones who give you the pixel to place the cookie. So it can either be Facebook or Twitter or a third party website, and they eat the cookies. They're the cookie monster, and they, from those cookies, they give you advertising. So they're the ones who say, okay, you visited my website, I'm going to show you an ad on Facebook or on Twitter or on Google. Now, how can you retarget? Now, this is where it gets interesting because most people only know about retargeting based on the website that you've been to. But that's not very exciting for music, because in music, we don't actually go a lot to artists' websites, right? How often do you visit a website for an artist? What you really tend to do is watch YouTube videos or click on links or emails to some extent. You can actually retarget based on YouTube and links and emails. Is, you need to use a third-party advertising uh, partnership. I like Radium One and Foundy. Those two are good. Radium 1 is more for high budget, so that would be for your majors. Foundy is more DIY, found.ee. But YouTube is a one that everyone can use without using a third party. And that's a really cool one, in my opinion, because you can actually start creating a retargeting list or remarketing list on YouTube, which tracks everyone that watches all of your music videos or some of your music videos, who have liked, commented, or shared <coughs> your videos, who have subscribed to your channel or visited your channel, or, I think that's most of it, or oh, who watch one of your past ads and haven't skipped it, so watch the entire ad. And you can create these lists and then use them later for advertising. So, when your new music video comes out, you show an ad to the people who watch your old music video, right? That makes sense, right? That's very smart marketing. So that's a great way of doing some um, retargeting. Well, let's talk about some of the advanced features specific to Facebook. So I talked about emails not being dead, and emails are not dead because click-through rates are the highest on emails than anything on social media, so please don't underestimate how important it is to still have a mailing list. Why do 90% of websites, artists', artists websites, don't have mailing lists to sign up anymore blows my mind, you need to have that on the website. And the other reason why you need to have emails is because you can use them in online advertising as well. So, if you have a very good mailing list, you can, or even an average mailing list, you can upload it to Facebook custom audiences. And there, what it will do is when you upload the emails, it will look for those, people's, those people on Facebook. If they have a matching email on Facebook than they do to the one they signed up, they'll find them on Facebook. <coughs> then you can use that to advertise. So you can say mailing list for band A, and then you can do three things. Either you can say, my email, my email list is rocking, I have a high open rate, I'm not going to pay to reach them on uh, Facebook because I can just reach them on email for free, so I'll exclude them whenever I do targeting. I'll say, people who like my page, excluding my mailing list. Or I'll say, hey, my mailing list is really quite bad, the open rate is super poor, but I know these people like me because they gave me their email address, so I'll just hit them up on Facebook because they're interested. Or you can do a combination of whatever you like, right? So that's how you may want to do it. So it's really, really smart to try and advertise to people on your email address or not to advertise. Now, on top of that, they've said, that's not enough, let's do look-alike audiences. So look-alike audiences is when you take your email list of custom audience and you tell Facebook, look for people who are similar to people who are on my email list, because these people really like me. So can you please look for some people who are similar? And they just go and look for similar Facebook people. And then you can use that lookalike audience to advertise to them. Right, so it's a great way of trying to get new fans if you've got a really strong mailing list. Now, I tend to think that this works better for like indie bands than like big pop acts, because you'll find that pop acts, people's advertise, like uh, Facebook movements are a bit you want to look for niche audiences, not like you've got an audience that's a bit of a, a 
mixed bag. Like if you, the more niche your audience is, the better this works because you've got more similar traits. You can also say, I want to find people who look like people who visit my website. So this is when you use retargeting. You're tracking people who are going to your website. You're already advertising to them. But you also want to advertise to people who are similar to the people who visit your website. Or people who are similar to use your mobile app, which is not very exciting. But also people who are similar to people who really like your page. So you can say to them, find more people that are similar to people who like my page and I want to advertise to them. Now, all of this has to be country specific. So you've got to do it country by country. So that's a bit annoying, but normally I just like kind of look at my top five countries and then I just do those. Or cities as well. I think you can do Yeah, I think it's for cities. No, it's for country. I like country. So that's a very smart way. Now, this is the stuff where I'm telling you should be A-B testing it, right? So you A-B test a look-alike audience versus people who like a similar artist, or you A-B test your custom audience to your non-custom. What happens if you include it? What happens if you exclude it? This is the stuff you should be able to test it because it's advanced features and you don't really know what's going to happen until you do it. Now, what about Twitter? So let's talk about, we talked about the Twitter cards. I wanted to go some detail into it. So Twitter cards, you can either create them while you're creating your advertising or you can actually create them for free, which is the stuff that they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know you can create them for free because they're really quite cool and they want you to pay for them. But if you put your credit card in the back of Twitter's advertising platform, you don't have to spend a cent, you just put your credit card in, it will start to, there's a new thing that appears that's called creatives or something like that, and then there this is, it says cards. So cards can be created and actually just tweet it out like a normal tweet, or you can use them in, in advertising. You should definitely use them in advertising, but you should also tweet them out for free. So I talked about this before, but just a recap, you can create a lead generative card so you can add a picture, a little description, add a call to action, and when people see it, that's what they'll see. They'll see their username and their email, and if they click on it, they send you your email address. You can also create a website card, which is great. Whenever you've got links to share, you should have a picture, a little description, and a call to action, and that. You still have 140 characters. Look how much space you've got. That's loads of free space, man. That's like golden on Twitter. Look how big that tweet is. Versus like, watch the, click on the link and then blue link, blah, right? That's, that's like amazing compared to that. That's a huge improvement. And then there's also the cards for apps, but these are less sexy because not a lot of people are using apps. But yes, you can also get app installs using Twitter cards, which is much better than just setting up a link of your app. If you are very uh, kind of um, computer savvy or program HTML savvy, there's a whole bunch more cards you can create. But then you need to know what you're doing with coding, so I'm not going to cover that. <coughs> Twitter also has custom audiences, but they call them tailored audiences, so it's the same thing. You upload people's email addresses. By the way, you can also upload phone numbers if you have them instead. And then it will find them on Twitter, and then you can advertise to them, either include them or exclude them in your advertising. And they also have lookalike audiences, but theirs is less fancy. It's just a lookalike based on your, on your mailing list already that you've created. The last thing about Twitter advertising that I really like is the fact that they can do television advertising. Now, Twitter's a bit of a small dog for a baby. It's really quite, you know, trying to fight strongly in third place. But it's got something that sets it apart in this TV section. So if you are going to be on TV, again, it's an amazing moment. You're jumping up and down. We're going to have a sink on a really big show. And then you're like, ooh, well, let's have people shazam. No. Right, how can we make the most out of every moment? So here, you can actually target people who are watching a show on a specific date and who are tweeting about it or who are searching about the show and hit them up. So that's what I did with one of my bands. They were having a, uh, they were on um, Made in Chelsea. We got a sync, so we made sure that everybody that was watching the, uh, the um, show and that was tweeting or searching for the, searching about the show at the same time on Twitter, we hit them up with an ad so that they could click on it, right? If you're going to pay for advertising on TV, make it clickable. The kids are going to watch it, and then five seconds later, they're going to forget about your ad. So if you're investing in TV advertising, make it clickable by partnering it up with a Twitter uh, advertising, because you know it's going to be on this show at that time. So make it clickable by the same people who are tweeting and watching, <coughs> they're going to be able to click on that link. So this is the one thing that I'm very excited about because I can say I found them that I didn't really, but I kind of did. So I talked about um, 
links that work on, you click on them and they break and it drives me mad. The only problem is that with streaming, we don't know who's a Spotify user, who's a web slash title user, who's a, uh, I don't know, a Beats, well, they're not really existing right now, but, you know, we don't know what type of music consumption you have. And the problem with advertising these days is that we shouldn't say, buy my album, here's an iTunes thing, that's if you're a valuable fan. We should just say, I've got a song out, I've got an album out, please just, just listen to it. Like, I don't care how you do it, I just want you to listen to it. Because that's where we're at at the moment, right? It's just, here is it, do, what it, do with it whatever you want, as long as you listen to it, that's a good thing. That's how we should be advertising. But it's quite hard to do that with one link. We don't have one link for all of that. So here comes link five. Tiny little startup in Copenhagen, uh, and they kind of like smart URL. I don't know how many of you are using smart URL, but it's better than smart URL because it actually puts in your streaming links and your buy links and your merch link and your physical links all in one place. So what you do is you give them one link, and then they find all of the matching links for you across the world in like a um, second, or okay, maybe 30 seconds, and then they populate it all for you. And it's also specific to your country, so you can have links, one link will look different depending on which country you click on with every single partner you might want plus some more that you can manually add. So if you want to add physical manual links you can as well. They don't look those up automatically but they do look up all online digital stores and all online digital streaming platforms for you and give you one link which you can then uh, customize as well. So they're kind of half and be the half not. If you want to sign up just sign up on the website on Linkfire and give my name and you should be fired to get a, a beta test run. They are really quite exciting. Uh, the back end looks like this, so you can, you, know, you can decide the order of the platforms, which ones you want to be shown, which ones you don't want to be shown, what the picture must be, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, they're just brilliant. Because with one link, you can actually advertise to everyone. You can just say, listen to my album, whatever you want. Right, so they're really quite a fun one to play around with. Uh, so you can check that out. The, it's free for the, the basic uh, version, and then you pay if you want to use retargeting and affiliate links and a, and a cool, uh, I think they have to do more analytics if you pay. Okay, so let's put that all together. I've got five minutes. How do we do an advertising uh, campaign? Now we've got this, this whole, this new art just coming out. So, how do we put it all together? First of all, Google yourself. If you're not coming at the top, change your name because your name's bad. That's pretty much what I would say. If you have a Swedish name and you have funky letters, I know this is rude, but funky letters in it, please change your name. I'm being serious. You, if you are, if you ever want to be an international artist, it's going to be a pain. If Jay Z drops the hash with the, the, the dash because he can't handle metadata being correct, you cannot handle the funky letter that no one has on their keyboard, right? I promise you, I'm a manager of artists. The funny names, they drive you crazy. People misspell them, they're wrong. You've got three versions of you on Spotify, and you're, every PR guy is gonna mess it up. Just, just don't put yourself through it. Just change your name so that you can get to the top of Google without having to pay for it, and that it's easy to find. Normally two, one name is fine, but it's better if there's two words and they're kind of different, right? So if you're calling yourself boys, that's gonna be hard to find. So, that's important, then if you get that right, you don't need to pay for search. So it's, forget about search. Then you need to figure out what you sound like. So I know you think you sound like Radiohead, but so does everybody else, and you, no one really does. So you need to find who you sound like, so that when you're doing advertising, this is the first, this is like your, your basic retargeting. Your basic targeting is always gonna be target people who like similar artists. That's kind of the thing you're gonna A-B test again. So always know what that is, so that when you're doing advertising, that's a good place to start when you're looking for new fans. Now, there's a very cool new platform on Facebook that's just been launched, and it's called Facebook Audience Insights. It's in your Facebook advertising manager section, on the right-hand side below, create an ad, there's like Facebook ad manager, I think. And it's called Audience Insights, and you can actually go in and see, so this is, I'm looking at people who are connected to crocodiles and see what other pages they like. So, Dum Dum Girls, Dive, Beach Fossil, and all this stuff. So I can know to use those, um, those bands when I'm targeting. So you can actually see 
where they're living, what's the demographic versus the average norm, what's, what do they like, and you can use this uh, information to target advertising on the platform. So I did this, I tested um, using this information in targeting versus doing a lookalike audience of people who like my page. And I got slightly different results, so that is quite a good one to kind of maybe test. <coughs> then the next thing to do is to only advertise behind cool content, right? It's just, let's not waste money behind the picture of a cat. I know the cat's cute, but it's not gonna get you anywhere, right? So what are we gonna advertise behind? Number one, obviously a new music video. That's like your golden moment for advertising. If you have a new music video, put aside some money to advertise because that is the best thing you could advertise behind because it's gonna make people who like you like you some more, hopefully, otherwise change the video. And it's gonna get new people to possibly know about you. That's the place where they enter, music videos, right? That's when you get new fans or concerts, obviously, but this is really important. So you're launching a music video, what do you do? Well, you can do post engagement to push out to people. If not everyone saw the post, then you wanna push it out to the rest of the people who like your page, because they'll definitely care about a new video. Then you're gonna do web content, because you want people who don't know your page to see. But actually, yeah, I couldn't do website link. I'd probably do a Facebook video with a 20 second version of the video that pushes out to the YouTube video in my watch more section. So I probably would do Facebook video, not website clicks, but A-B test it and tell me what your results are. Email me. And then I would do a video advert on Google based on retargeting on people who watched my videos in the past. Or I would do people, if I don't have a lot of fans and a lot of people watched it, I would target people who watch similar artists on YouTube or put it on top of videos that are similar. And then I would do a Twitter tweet engagement by pushing out the tweet once I've tweeted it. So that is all the things I do for a video. Now here's an inspirational example when it comes to retargeting. I'm nearly done, I know I'm in one minute. But this is a great one from Gabrielle Appen when she actually said, let's do retargeting in a way that is smart. So she started creating these retargeting, or her team created two retargeting lists. One with people who watched her biggest video, and one with the super fans who watched every single one of her videos and also like, comment, share, blah, all over there, right? She knew those guys need to be spoken to differently than the average newcomer guys. So when she had the new music video come out, the average fans or the lukewarm fans just got the video, the next video saying, cool, the new video's out, or the album's out, check it out. And then the very cool super fans got a message of Gabriel speaking on the camera saying, hey guys, I know you're my super fan, so here I get, I've got you an 18 minute secret sampler that only you can listen to, and then also there's this video that's coming out, and also my album's coming out. The fans freaked out. Because what? This is an ad of Gabriel speaking to me and she knows I'm a super fan. Are you kidding me? This is like the best day of my life. She actually knows I've watched every single one of her videos. This is so cool. This is how you shift from annoying retargeting to super cool retargeting, right? So just think about it. Advertising is not about trying to massively annoy everyone. It's about trying to react to different levels of fandom and appropriately communicating with them to try and push them along the big journey that is getting everyone to a super fan. Then, mailing list signups. Uh, Facebook plugins, I kind of pulled it out because, well, you can have one anyway, but the apps are kind of dead. You remember those blocks on the top, they're on the side, no one clicks on them. You can have a plugin if you like, but it's not going to get you much. Facebook post engagement, so you either push out saying, hey, sign up to my mailing list, and then you have a link that goes to a website that is only for signing up, not to your actual website that has the sign up thing somewhere, but just to a, a site that says sign up, because if you push them to your website, they're gonna get distracted and do something else and forget, right? Or a video that says, hey guys, sign up, because we're gonna give you some stuff, and then people react to it and then sign up. Or you do a website conversion, so you actually track how many people are signing up, and then a Facebook offer. Now this doesn't get you their email address, but if you tell them, here's 20% off on my shop, and they buy stuff on your shop, then you have their email address because they bought stuff and therefore you have their email. Or you do a twi Twitter lead generation card where you ask them to sign up by just clicking on one button that looks like this, in case you forgot what it looks like. And then last two, album launch. So you are going to either do post engagement, so you tell everyone the album is out, and then you push it out to everyone who likes your page, or you do a video with a, with a the album is out today, and then you push it out, or you do a website conversion, where you push people to actually buy it if you're selling it online, 
and you're tracking it, or you do remarketing on YouTube, so everyone that watched a lot of your videos in the past would want to know the album's coming out, or you do hashtag and promoter tweets on Twitter. Last one. Ticket sales. So you're going on you're going on tour and you can either push people to go and respond on Facebook with their going if it's a free ticket. If it's a paid ticket, I push them up to website clicks or conversions if you're selling it on your website. Then you would do a Facebook video to tell people about the show and then of course mailing list, mailing list, mailing list, mailing list. That's how you're gonna sell tickets. Now, last example of today, this is a nice one. It went to go my band was going on but on tour with uh, Atoms for Peace. And so they targeted everyone who was in the cities they were going to who liked uh, Athens for Peace and said, guys, we know you're going for Athens for Peace. We know you don't really care about us. But just watch our Vegas music video because we're going to be playing before. It'd be nice if you could share our favorite song. That's how you advertise. Be human. Right? That did really, really well because guess what? They were acting like they put themselves on the other side. Right? Stop being like, I would never like this on Facebook myself in here have some of this advertising that's lame, right? Just, you'd be surprised when you change your tone to like a human tone, how much your click-through rate doubles. So just try, think about an easy way to do it. Let's finish with the final slide. Top quality ad, because if your ad doesn't look good, then you're wasting money. Don't push out an ad that no one would click on. Top quality website, if it doesn't work on a mobile, then don't give it to me. And the same thing with links, etc. Length of the ads. If you're on Facebook, it can't last longer than two or three days. Same for Twitter. Targeting using advanced options. Try out all of the new stuff I showed you today. A, B, test it. Email me. Tell me which one worked, which one didn't work. I'd love to hear from you guys. Then test, analyze, not again. You don't know until you try. You just don't know. So you've got to try, and then you've got to let me know. And then try, tie everything together and have some fun. Thank you so much. <laughs>